What's up, y'all? Jack Williams here. I'm uh, here with Rowan, training the field today. And I'm going to show you guys a couple of examples on how to get open in the reset space. I'm a bit of a hybrid, so this is a situation that I find myself in a lot, is sort of trying to get a reset from the trap sideline here. So we're going to go over a few things that you can do and drill out to help uh, get the disc off the sideline, maybe get it up line, get some power position as well. So yeah, the first thing that I like to do when we have the disc on a trap sideline over there is I like to push up, push forward up to about 45 degrees positive right here. The reason I like to do this is because it allows for a big window for the thrower to throw either the inside lane right here, or if they decide to go with the around throw, once they hit me, they're not losing a ton of yards backfield because they're leading me into the space even with the thrower right here. So the first thing that we're going to do that we're going to go over is getting the disc off the trap sideline back to the middle and doing a quick swing to the other side to switch the field quickly. So what I like to do is I push up positive 45 degrees. I like to kind of get into a skipping motion here. So I'm on the balls of my feet. So I am able to have a really good quick step. I push forward here. And I make sure to wait for eye contact from the thrower. And once I get that eye contact, I read my defender. And if they're playing on this hip right here, I like to give a little jump cut jab here, get the disc off to the middle and do a quick swing. So in real time, I'm gonna be jogging forward right here, doing a little skip, wait for the eye contact, jab, get it. And I wanna make sure I'm releasing that disc as quickly as possible so I don't give the mark a chance to catch up. Another alternative you can do to this drill is do the same footwork here, jab forward, get the disc. Imagine that your mark is over commits there, then you can pivot in and hit the inside window right there. Um, an easy way to add a progression to this move is to have an upline counterattack. So depending on how your defender is guarding you, maybe they recognize that you're getting open on that jab step for easy swings over and over, and they wanna play a little bit more aggressively on you. A good counter move for the footwork is to push up the same way, and you're gonna give the same jump cut back, opening up your hips here, but instead of continuing backfield, you're gonna get the little jump cut back and then you're gonna curl to get the up line and get the power position hook right there. So the key here is you have to read if your defender is playing too aggressively on you to take away that back, that backfield look. If you feel them close on your hip right here, that's when you can get low, dig around and do a good power position hook right there. If you happen to be training with a partner or a teammate, um, that's ideal because you can then kind of sync up with the thrower. So in this instance, I would be able to get into position and I can make real eye contact with my thrower and they can lead me out to space right here and I can work on that quick transition of catching and releasing for the swing right away. And then the same thing on the upline read, you can get it into position, wait for that, that eye contact. Maybe they can throw you a pump back. You can dig underneath, throw you, you can work on catching and throwing a power position hook. And this is a drill that's great for all skill levels. If you're just beginning at the handler position, you can work on that footwork at about 50% to make sure you're getting those right plant foots correct. And if you're more advanced at the handler position, you can work on going more at full speed to be able to execute at 100% level. Now I'm gonna show you one of my favorite drills and the drill that I used the most when I first started to learn how to throw. And it's a very simple drill. What you're gonna to wanna to do is set up two cones on either side, the forehand side and the backhand side and then four other smaller cones where you're gonna set your pivot foot. The biggest thing that you're gonna wanna work on and be focusing on here is your release point and getting out wide to be, get around the mark. So what I have right here set up is a target that I'm going to try to hit all my throws at. And I'm gonna start out real simple right here with my first pivot foot and this cone that I'm working to release the disc around, which would be simulating the mark. And I'm gonna step around and throw out my target. Once that feels comfortable and that feels consistent, I'm gonna move on to the next pivot point, which is a little bit further away. I have a little bit more of a pivot right here, a little bit more reach out with my extension for my throwing. I'm gonna throw at the same target. I'm just gonna progress further and further until I'm really pushing myself and it feels pretty uncomfortable. And that's when I know how to stop. These cones are used as a general guideline, but sometimes it only takes an inch, an extra inch or two for it to really push your boundaries of what you're comfortable with. So, this is about what I feel comfortable with right now. I'm gonna have a big pivot right here. I'm gonna get my release point out here. 
throw at that target. And then the last one where it's really gonna push me is this far release point right here. I got this long pivot. That's about as far as I can reach physically and I'm gonna work. And that was kind of a turf, but that's okay. That's what you wanna do. You wanna push yourself in order to get better. And as always, you wanna stay balanced. So I'm going to do the same thing on the backhand side, throwing and then continuing to move my pivot foot further and further back. And if you happen to be working with a partner, more advanced players can either use a mark or they can be throwing to a moving target so they can work on those big pivots while hitting someone in stride. Like I said, these are two of my favorite drills that I've used to get better throughout my career. Uh, I look forward to sharing more, so stay tuned on my socials on YouTube and Instagram.